Hey guys, I uh, just want to make a quick video on the uh, TRX-6 I picked up a few months ago. Um, just kind of go over some of the things I've put on uh, and why I did the things that I did. Um, I'm really not, of course, you know, you're looking at a TRX-6 that has like a bunch of parts on it and stuff. You think that you have money, but I don't necessarily have the money to spend. I tried to spend things where I needed to. Uh, some of the things were things I wanted, and some of the things had a legitimate reason uh, for replacing. So I'm just going to kind of go over that uh, first. I'll start off with the body. Uh, very early on, I realized that this thing's body is not uh, really... I mean, uh, I don't know, it's just not a great clearance on this thing. So the body's kind of chipped up here. Uh, I actually cut the fenders here uh, in the front, and that helped a lot. So I can get kind of a side bite with my tires and climb up stuff a little bit easier. I'm probably going to end up changing some stuff with the body or changing the body overall at some point. Uh, but for now, I went ahead and just figured out all the spots where I found like little nicks or cuts or cracks uh, where stuff was just getting worn down. And so I cut along that line right there. I actually cut some of this out as well. And this here too. Uh, this actually caught on a rock and started ripping the whole body. Uh, so I went ahead and cut that on both sides. Um, walk around here to the other side so you can see. And I did the same thing over here. Uh, but it still falls into that slot. I didn't want to cut that. I just think it gives the body a little bit extra support. Um, so I left that on there for that reason. Let's see. So, let's take the top off. Alright, so, I have the, uh, we'll start with the tires and wheels. I have not added any brass yet. I actually ordered some last night. Um, just watched a ton of videos and stuff, and I wasn't really impressed with some of the results, but I think at this point it needs it, uh, and our Bronco does too. Uh, just on some steeper climbs, they, the front tires keep lifting, so I think it's time. Uh, but... And when I first got it, I was just not impressed with the uh, stock tires and uh, the the uh, the whole setup there was just garbage. The foams were not that great. After a couple of runs, if you get them wet and don't squeeze them out completely dry, uh, they don't do well. And mine were also out of the box had some wobble uh, to them as they were moving. And uh, when I was tearing them down, because I actually reused uh, these. These uh, I used these wheels with the original tires initially, and uh, when I was trying to remove them, I boiled the the wheels and tires for about I don't know 20 minutes or so. Then I baked them in the oven uh, for about 15 minutes, and the tires themselves came off pretty easily. But the foam it was actually like glued to the beadlock on a. Uh, or to the wheel uh, on the on the original set, and so there was lumps in them. Uh, some pieces like chunked out and tore out whenever I was trying to remove them and reuse them. Uh, so I would recommend getting some cheap foams if you don't want to get the Pro Line uh, dual stage foams, which are like you know the uh, the bee's knees. Uh, I would recommend that uh, just getting some cheap Enjora or something like that to get you going until you can get the good stuff. I don't recommend if you're gonna put the stock wheels and tires back on at some point, don't use the, the original foams, they're terrible. Or replace them either. Um, There's just better options out there for the same money. Uh, so I got the 2.2 wheels from eBay. Um, this set I think was like $54 for all six. Uh, and that was, I was looking at having to buy two kits um, everywhere else because they were only sold in sets of four. Uh, so I kind of lucked out with that, I guess. I think the price has gone up a little bit, but it's still under 70 bucks. Uh, last time I checked for that set, um, you just type in like eBay or on eBay, just type in a 2.2 uh, X6 wheels, and it should pop up. I think there's only one or two. They're all red though. Uh, there was no other color options, so that's why I got it. it looks okay. It's not my thing. I would have preferred like a gunmetal or something like that with the black body. Uh, and then as far as the foams go, these are uh, some Hyrax knockoffs I got. These are actually no names. Uh, these are 1.9 tires. I stretched them over the 2.2. I'm going to have to go ahead and redo it on the front one. It looks like it's coming out a little bit uh, or it wasn't seated properly when I first did it. I was probably too, too much of in a hurry to go outside and play with it. Um, but these little Hyrax knockoffs work really well. And the reason, though, why I actually got new tires after I had these wheels on uh, was this. The Hobbywing Axe System 
It's ridiculous. Uh, the speed you get out of it is insane. Um, I have the 3300 KV model. Uh, I used the gear that came with it, which I believe is a 12 tooth, uh, a 12 T. And oh my God, it is stupid fast. I've had a, I had turbo timing enabled in the beginning and I've since backed it down to zero. Um, it is just very, very, very fast. Once it spools up, it just takes off. And I don't know if we're around 20 miles an hour, what the speeds are, but it's, it was enough to uh, balloon the original tires uh, with the original foams in there. And when they were ballooning, they would actually start touching. And it was rubbing the center part of the tire off on high speed runs. Like I would notice it would come back and that rubber was very dark, like it had been rubbing and there's low spots in the tires. Uh, so I looked around, I found uh, you can get a set of four of these with uh, 1.9 bead locks, which are actually on the the red cat over there. Um, you can't really see it, but these are the actual wheels that came with it, and uh, they're not bad. But I went ahead and put them on this one, and use the 2.2s just for some extra stability in the future. Once I actually have decent foam, it'll help to have the 2.2, because uh, this is a heavy rig. I weighed it the other day. I don't have any added accessories to it. Uh, as far as like you know, body parts and things like that, or or weights, and it's 8.5 pounds as it sits with the ag system. That is pretty heavy. Um, the 21T motor struggled, and that's kind of why I went ahead and made the jump to the ag system. Uh, I was a little hesitant after my first experience because in my Red Cat, uh, that that's actually a, a, an ag edition. Uh, when I got it, I was I was enjoying uh, the cruise control feature, whatever you want to call it, and uh, using it to train my kids on how to drive it and uh, one day when we were outside about three months after we had it during COVID, uh, they left it running and it was up against a fence for about 10 or 15 minutes and just churning up the tires and grass and dirt and it got overheated, I guess, and it melted the windings in that motor. Uh, so the ESC still works and updates and stuff like that, but the motor, I've tried repairing it a few times and I just can't. I think the windings inside are damaged and there's nothing I can do to fix it. Uh, and that whole system is uh, to add to the the hesitation, uh, the Axe V 1.1 system is no longer available anywhere. So you cannot, you can, you cannot find new motors. Uh, there's only like one or two ESCs floating around on eBay uh, for that 1.1 system if yours fails. But uh, I couldn't get a replacement motor for it, so I was thinking about putting the Axe system in here and slowing that one down with a 21 turn motor for my kids. So it's kind of convoluted, but that was the thought process. Uh, was to go ahead and put the axe in here, but since the other one, I couldn't find a replacement motor, I just went ahead and purchased a new one from their website. Uh, this is the, uh, again, 3300 KV system. It is amazing on this vehicle. It is just like a match made in heaven. I was initially worried that it would be too fast, and it is, but I'm glad that I have the speed. Because uh, sometimes in sand, uh, in mud or water, that extra RPM on the wheels helps a lot. And uh, that motor, is, it, is, it just crawls. It is ridiculous. There's plenty of videos out there, so I'm not going to have to demonstrate, but it is silent and it just crawls for you. You don't even have to modulate the throttle at all on, on most climbs. Every once in a while, you have to get a little bump bump uh, to get over something, but it'll just sit there and slowly, slowly creep its way up something. Uh, as far as the suspension goes, I've adjusted the uh, coilovers a little bit, or whatever you'd want to call that, the adjustment on the spring. I think I need to get some heavy springs for this, or heavier, maybe some of the dual rate ones. I don't know much about Traxxas suspension though, so I'm gonna have to do some research. Uh, I did move the uh, spring mounts on both rear axles forward to the third hole, and that just allows for more articulation, a um, little bit more travel there. So. I don't think it would be beneficial to put it in the fourth hole because it was already like touching here. It was very close. Uh, so that's where I left those. Uh, but I have both of them set up that way. I don't know if there's an advantage or disadvantage to it. But it rebounds like it should. Front and rear, each corner. These are probably a little too tight. But I also raised it up a little bit more so than I probably should. And I lost some of my droop. Uh, but a lot of the curbs and rocks and obstacles that I have out here are just too tall and the front of this thing sucks. Uh, flat out, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm going to do something. I've seen some bumpers on Amazon uh, 
that look like they have some good solid mounting systems. And I think I'm going to cut here along this body line uh, on the bumper and then put a, uh, a metal one on there and try to bring up the approach angle just a little bit and then maybe add a servo saber down here. Uh, but this hangs so low. It really does. And the Bronco can get up a lot more things than this one can, and it has a big old honking bumper too. But it's just, this is pushed out a little bit further past the tires. And so your approach angle is not super duper. It's not terrible, but it's not great. So that is something that will be addressed in the future. And uh, I also plan on, since I got a little overzealous one day, I, asked, I went through all the trouble of setting up, you know, resoldering the uh, JST plug or whatever it's called uh, from the old ESC onto here, onto these leads, so we could have um, the LED system hooked up. And uh, it worked great, but I took it out for a run not too long ago, and uh, I ended up like ripping the plug part out of the harness. It was just hanging down because I was too lazy to plug it in the moment, and uh, it was hanging down here in this hole out the bottom, and I didn't realize it, and it went through some grass. When it came back, the plug was just ripped off, and it was bare wire. So there is a cool little thing I saw on eBay for like 20 bucks, but it would replace the front post, uh, and it has a little JST plug and a magnetic base so you could just drop the body on uh, on the front and it'll have the magnets are actually um, have points and so it'll automatically connect your lights uh, without you having to plug anything in anytime you drop the body on and it'll kind of help auto center itself a little bit um, I'm not sure if I would trust it completely without using some body clips just because it's the front of the vehicle and I know the body kind of comes down over the bumper a little bit and helps brace it, but it's just, I don't know, I don't feel comfortable with that. I think it's still going to pop the body off if you hit something hard enough uh, with the magnets. So I'd probably still use the clips, but the convenience of that alone, just being able to drop the body on, yes. All right. Oh, another thing I did, actually I'll demonstrate right now. Uh, as far as the battery tray goes, I think it's worth... Uh, tweaking. Not necessarily buying something new like the Bathouse battery tray or something. There's nothing wrong with that system. Uh, I just feel like you can use what you got. And if you can use what you got, you don't need to buy new stuff sometimes. So I try to save money where I can. Uh, so what I did is I actually took the top part off, like the, the latching system that they use, and replaced it with a little tiny Velcro strap. I need to get a couple more to put on the front too. Um, and then I also removed the part on the back that it clips into. And in doing so, this is one of my favorite little things that I've done so far. And these are all free. These are free mods. Free mods are best mods by Dogecoin. All right, so let's get our little screws out here. So anytime you need to like replace a wire uh, or remove something or whatever, you know it can be a real pain because wires are going underneath this battery tray. And uh, by removing this this back part off of the uh, the battery tray, it will actually allow it to rotate up and out of your way. And you have all the access you need right there just by taking out those two screws. And you don't have to mess with trying to line these up or pop this thing back in and again. Once you do it and you have it off once, you just take the couple screws out of the bottom. That little insert comes out. Um, and you can just rotate it up out of the way. All right. So everything else, let's see. Uh, I put a couple TR4 ship servers on here. Uh, the rear one failed twice and they warrantied it once and then after that they're kind of like you're on your own bud. Uh, so I replaced with this TR4 one. It is a it's a tough little guy. Uh, it's hanging in there. The the rear locker cable uh, it binds and I didn't realize that so I think that's what's actually causing the issue. The cable has a kink in it somewhere or it failed and it's binding inside and it was the servo just couldn't do its job. It couldn't push it back in uh, because it was, uh, you know, stuck. So this one is actually still actuating, even though the cable is not really wanting to cooperate. 
Um, and I've been pretty happy with that uh, so far. And I have a couple more of those on my Bronco. I think I bought like a set of four or six, and I'm just replacing the other shift servos as they go. Um, let's see what else we've done here. I chose Dean's, by the way. They're just, it's easier to find, and the batteries are cheaper. And I don't know, man, it works. I'm not pushing a ton of amps through this thing, so I don't really think I need XT60 or whatever the other ones are. I think this is more than adequate. And I have a brushless system going on here. I'm not using external BEC, but in the front, also I've added the uh, the Reefs RC uh, 422 HD VR or V2 uh, steering servo. This came out of the Axe Edition. Uh, I like to recycle parts. The Axe was sitting around because it didn't have a motor. So I went ahead and strips whatever I could off of it uh, so I can get some money worse out of it in the meantime. So this servo is pretty tough. Uh, it's held up pretty darn well so far to the TRX-6. It's a heavy vehicle. Uh, this is running at 6 volt. If you, that's one thing that sucks about the, uh, the Traxxas TRX line is that there's not a simple way uh, that I'm aware of to... Uh, aside from buying their external B BEC, which I think still runs only at six volts, uh, there's, it's, you, you'll end up burning up the micro servos. If somebody can find some waterproof Metal Gear micro servos that can run up on a 3S, you'd be my hero, uh, because I would buy them in a heartbeat if I could do that. Uh, but this is still running on six volt, like I was just saying, and it is fantastic. Like it does really well. Uh, it's not super fast or super torquey, but it's more than adequate on downhill sections. Uh, you can still turn your wheel back and forth and move yourself around, which you know is really what matters at the end of the day. Uh, but I've been pleased with that so far, and I don't. I have some other uh, servos on my list, but I don't. I don't think I'm going to end up replacing this one. I think I'm happy with the performance I'm getting out of it. Uh, also, get the first thing you should buy is this Dagon Traxxas uh, steering servo horn if you buy any TRX product. Uh, the stock servo horn sucks and the stock servo sucks. Uh, on my Bronco I'm running, uh, they have a deal on Amazon where you can get I think two of the Animos uh, 25 kg servos for what was it? It was like 40 bucks or something. Done. It, they work well. So uh, maybe for this one particular one, I would use like one of the 35 kg Animos, but that one does very well on that Bronco. Uh, and I'll probably make another video on that Bronco cause I've been really happy with that setup. Uh, that's my older son, Asher's truck. Uh, but back to business, I am, this thing is so much fun. And there are some things on here that you don't necessarily have to do. Like you can probably get just as much joy out of it. Uh, if you put in a Holmes Hobby 21-turn uh, Trailmaster Sport uh, and a Hobbywing 1080 ESC uh, or one of their pullers or something like that, you know, whatever you want. But uh, the bang for the buck, I don't necessarily know if it's there, but the fun factor is very much there with the Hobbywing Axe system. Uh, it's also kind of convenient because I can whip my phone out, change something on the fly. The range is okay. You know, you don't have to be like a foot away from it for it to work. Uh, but it's nice because you can always turn down either on the uh, controller or the the ESC. You can turn down the throttle for your kids uh, so they don't break things. And uh, one of my one of the mods uh, that I haven't mentioned yet that is one of my favorite ones is this. This made a big difference in precision control modulation. It is the uh, FlySky GT5. Fantastic little radio. It came with the uh, Hobbywing Axe Edition and uh, I feel like it was just being wasted on there. That's a two channel RC car and this is way overkill aside from the finite amount of and the uh, and there's just so much more control. You have so many more settings in here and uh, so many more channels so I figured it just didn't make sense to leave it on that even if I was going to revive it and I put it on here and I could not be happier I've got my transmission set for channel 4 it's just on off uh, I do wish that there was just an on off like a binary signal uh, instead of these little guys for channels 
uh, five and six that I'm using for the uh, front and rear lockers. I don't like that. Um, personally, I'd I'd rather have some kind of toggle switch or something, or if you could just have them set to like you know zero or one, on or off. Uh, but the fact that you have to sweep it back and forth, uh, I don't like. the The stock Traxxas servo actually does pretty well with this one. Uh, whenever I sweep, it moves pretty quickly and does what it needs to do. The rear one with the TR4 servo, that throt or that cable is binding on the rear locker. And so it's slower, and sometimes in order to save itself, it stops like halfway and doesn't engage all the way. Uh, so I'll have to kind of like sweep it back and forth a few more times, and then I hear it go, Zip. okay, now it's engaged. Uh, but other than that, I mean, I am very, very happy with the setup. I'm probably going to put brass here and on this axle. Uh, I talked to the guy at Crawler Innovations. He's actually a local company. I had no idea until I was look, looking them up. Uh, but... He's going to get me some foams uh, in probably the next couple months. They've had some supply chain issues, but I'm going to buy uh, from an American company, especially a local company. Uh, so once he has that stuff in, I'll be putting in his uh, his dual stage foams that he has for this. Uh, he has he told me the part numbers and stuff, and I'm just going to hang in there and wait. Uh, but other than that, man, I really cannot think of too many things that I want to do uh, outside of aesthetics. Um, Again, the the approach angle on this thing sucks. It's going to get addressed at some point. I'm probably going to put some kind of steel bumper on. I don't know. Uh, but something's going to happen. Uh, a little bit of brass, and that's it. I think it's going to be a pretty well-sorted little rig. Um, it does everything I want it to do and more. And, uh, yeah, I think it's a great truck. And I would definitely not recommend it for a first uh, your first foray into a RC world, but, uh, you know, I would be recommending, um, something like the Red Cat Gen 8 V2 or the, uh, TRX4 Sport, which I recommend personally to anyone who's thinking about getting in the hobby. Uh, there's just, the value isn't necessarily there, but the fun factor is. Uh, that's it guys. See you next time.